Yes, guys, what's going on? Welcome back to the podcast. Uh, today we are joined by Oli for episode nine. Uh, Oli's been brave enough to come on and enlighten us with his story. Um, Oli, do you want to tell them a little bit about yourself? Uh, yeah, my name's Oli. Um, I'm 21, uh, living in Croydon, uh, currently doing accountancy, uh, an apprenticeship, which, um, well, I, I'm, some of you that know me probably wouldn't realise that is my <laughs> actual occupation. Um, yeah, uh, a football fan, you know, always been playing football since since young, quite into sport and things. And yeah, yeah that's, that's basically it. I'm not... Uh, yeah, I've got a question for you that people that went to Riddles Down or played football with us are dying to know. Right. Are you still as quick as what you used to be? No. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I am nowhere near as good. One, once, once I got rinsed in year 10 and came full, but it's been downhill from there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, for anyone listening, this guy, when he was younger... It was like he had an engine inside of his body. I've never seen someone so quick ever. <laughs> so yeah, quick. Oh, Oi, just be all. I'm, you're like, well, Oli got an old. He's down the other end of the pitch already. Ah, so. <laughs> uh, oh, right. Um, well, first of all, thank you for coming on. Uh, thank you for being brave enough. I know it's a big step, and uh, um, especially where I have a feeling I know what you might talk about today. Um, you've been very, very brave to come on here. And like I said to you before, um, the people are here to listen to you and the people are here to support you. Um, and I don't doubt they're going to be very inspired by your story and what you have to say and how um, how valuable your story is going to be. So um, that's enough talking from me. So I'd like to open the first question with, what has been your experiences with your mental health growing up, Ollie? And yeah, tell us a little bit about it. Um, I'd say growing up, I didn't really have like many mental, like mental health issues as such. Not to, not that I can think of like straight off the bat. Um, obviously, obviously, like f f things have happened, like uh, my parents splitting up and things like that. But I feel like obviously it's not standard like with with most families but it's it is quite common mm -hmm. I guess that took a bit of a toll when I was younger but obviously I, I was sort of thinking the worst fit at the time um just sort of like oh no oh no I've lost my mum I've lost my dad what am I going to do sort of thing when it, it weren't really the case no. um yeah no apart from that I mean guy like going for riddles down and things like looking back at it now I, I love school do you know what I mean like spending time with your mates every day and things and I always had like I was, kept myself around good people yeah um never really got into like bad crowds and things or mm. uh bad people obviously you have your like uh spats with people in school but that's just that's just standard really yeah um yeah i felt like through that time like with my with my sport and with my football and things even if there was any sort of issues at the time that that would have sort of given me a, a, a release as such especially when you're growing up around that time it's sort of like puberty and your hormones and things like you mm find yourself getting very tense and angry and things which I, I hold my hand up and say I, I was as well yeah, of um yeah no like I'd say my, my mental health sort of started to started to get a bit sh shaky I guess you could call it when I was sort of around 18 sort of like after when we left school mm -hmm. um I was I decided to take a gap year I didn't take the the uni route or anything I was quite dead set on not uh, going to uni yeah um, but yeah I was sort of I'm, I'm one of these people who don't like well at the time and I guess you could still say now like I'm not a hundred percent what what I want to do in the yeah. future yeah um <laughs> and that um sorry that's fine don't worry about that all right <laughs> I'm going to wait till this starts because it's going to annoy me. Oli, you know I said that bit where I can edit out anything? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's <laughs> coming now. <laughs> I can't even remember why I stopped off now. Uh, you stopped off on um, you never really wanted to go down the uni route. Yeah, yeah. Okay, right. Um, all right, let me get back into it. Yeah. <laughs> all right. 
yeah no um i never i know I, I, I never really chose the uni route um and i yeah like i was saying i didn't really know what i wanted to do and that sort of bothered me quite a lot it still, it still does now yeah. um sort of not really having any direction because i'm one of these people who likes to sort of like be in a system if that makes sense like having xyz at this time bang yeah yeah, yeah. Routine, right? yeah, yeah exactly okay. um also those other little things as well like um I, like th this was when i was 18 19 so it was sort of like it's like that weird transition of going from like younger football into adult football yeah so because of what i'm doing now because it re requires quite a lot of like studying time and things and that i sort of at the time i thought it would have been a better suit to like pack like stop football yeah. which obviously it was it's, it, looking back at it now it was it was silly of me to think of uh, yeah. something like that because i feel like sport and just any sort of physical activity at all is just like Honestly, it's it's golden. Honestly, like yeah, hundred percent. Massive help, massive help. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then, yeah, uh, obviously recently, um, I saw uh, I lost my dad, which took a massive hit. Um, which, it, to be honest, it still, it still has now. Um, probably with all like my mates and that, they mm. probably don't see it as much. Yeah, it's sort of like the background stuff. It's sort of that's where it all sort of like you really see yeah. how I'm feeling. Um, yeah, so with that, like I've, I've, like I've started playing football again. I start doing, I'm still doing my home workouts and things. And I got introduced to the gym uh, when I think I was around like 19. And that, yeah. that's, that's been a godsend as well. Um, yeah, because yeah, before I was like, I was like, oh yeah, no, I don't want to do gym, all of that. I, like, I thought it was just full of like, like massive, like, uh, like, I don't know how to describe it like people with big egos and things yeah. like posing in the mirror and stuff and it's like I don't I don't really want to be a part of that Absolutely. um but yeah started going gym still doing home workouts now obviously they're not the same start trying to go for walks playing yeah. football again which all which all sort of help with the situation because obviously like I'm sure there's there's loads and loads of people who've been through the same situation as me if not worse mm. but uh, any sort of like physical activity I'd say is like a, a, a massive help um, and especially obviously these these people know who they are but anyone who's sort of taken their time to even message me once mm. sort of like sort of like talk to me day in day out do you know what I mean like yeah. it hasn't it hasn't gone amiss it all sort of helps now and it's sort of start starting to go up in yeah. terms of mental health really yeah but, so, um, bro, I think yeah well, first of all, rest in peace to your dad. Uh, obviously, where we played football to, where we played a, uh, we played football together from a young age. I, well, I wouldn't say I knew your dad, but I knew of him. Obviously, I was mm. being on hello and etc. Mm. But um, honestly, when when I see um, that you posted that, I was honestly so gobsmacked because just you know when you just like you don't expect like something to happen at all, mm. and like I can't. Like I can't imagine ever from at such a young age having to go through something so tra like traumatic, like touch wood. But I just I just saw it and I just thought like bloody hell, like this is crazy. Like obviously, I you said before you listened to uh, Jimmy's podcast, etc., where he spoke about losing his mum and stuff. And I guess you like listening to that, you kind of like you kind of just resonated with everything that mm. he said and like you can understand where he's coming from and stuff but I just think to have the strength to when do, do you mind if I ask what like when how long how long has it been uh it was the 11th of October last year so yeah. the, the point I'm the point I say in that is because what three four months later You've got to be some strong human to be able to come on and talk about it, bro. Like no, I said to you before, like things like that can take years and years and years for people mm -hmm. to even blur out one word. So for like on behalf of me and everyone listening, like well done to you for 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 coming here on here today and for being brave enough to get through what you've been through already. 
I know sometimes it probably feels like you're a million miles away from being what like anywhere you used to be but I think one thing that you have to remember is that you've got people around you like you said you've got people messaging you you've got your friends your family you've got your exercise which obviously people who know me know that I'm a massive advocate of that and whatever you're going through in life I feel like exercise should be part of that daily routine just for even if it's that 20 minute release like you said before like where you might even go for a walk for half an hour half an hour is still better than nothing do you know what I mean yeah Um, so to be able to come on here today and even tell people what's going on so soon after um yeah well done to you mate yeah, no, thank you, man. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. So, yeah, go on. Tell us a little bit about, well, I guess how it felt at first, um, other than shock, um, and kind of how your life kind of changed after it happened. Uh, yeah, it was, uh, it was, well, he started off in the ICU. I think mm. it was like a, a week or two before that. Yeah. I couldn't actually see him mm. because of like the COVID cases were rising at the time. Yeah. I think on the day they were like 15,000 or something, which literally, oh. if you put that in today's perspective, would, would, would be like a massive improvement. Yeah. But yeah, no, it was like because he hadn't been well since I was around like 16. He mm. uh, had to go in hospital then, and that was, that was a close call in itself. So yeah. it's sort of like a, build up yeah. from then in a sense like you could you could notice things like he was, he was half the person he was like he used to be mm. a very like tall very like big character and he was literally like you saw him like a walking stick like struggling to walk and it's such a massive transition it was like I'm sure ev- everyone who talked to him like would agree with me and say like he's, he, was, he was half he was half the person he was yeah. um, some people only met him when he was sort of like at his at his frail point I guess I guess you would call it and some people would have known him when he was like when I was younger and he was a lot more like me myself yeah yeah exactly exactly yeah um yeah so he uh it was my brother and his partner who Mm. would go in every day okay well I think it was like I think you could have like five slots a week for like an hour so um I just sort of had to wait and sort of like just sort of hear re- what what like the updates were and things. It was very like up and down. Yeah. Like one day it would be, oh yeah, we're taking them off like we're taking them off like the breathing machine or whatever it's called, like the respiratory. Yeah, like a massive like, tube down here. Yeah, whatever. Um, some days it would be that, and then some days it would be like bad news again. It was sort of like when it really kicked in, which I didn't actually realize at the time. It was on the Wednesday on the on the same week. I was yeah. I got a call from my brother. It was like you know like, call me sorry like now. Yeah. He was like yeah. Can you like ask a man just see if it's alright? I was like yeah, yeah sure. Um and it's like we we got we got good news back that day as well. Um yeah. And it's like yeah um like like we we were all struggling really like eating yeah. and drinking were just things which you know, we were having to like force ourselves to do, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then, yeah, we, um, so it was that Wednesday was the only time where I actually got to like see him physically. Yeah. Even then he was, he had, he had God knows how much in him. So he was like out cold just yeah. from pure like, antibiotics and things. Yeah. And um, so I saw him then. And then on the Saturday I waited outside and like the wait, like the, you know, in like East Surrey, where you go through the main entrance, there's that little bit on the left. Okay, yeah. Yeah, I was waiting there because um, I wanted to go with my brother. Yeah. Um, I was waiting there. This was in the the day on the Saturday. They, uh, on the yeah, on the Saturday, the day before. Yeah. And um, came back. My brother and it, uh, my dad's partner came out. It's like everything was fine. Like you know, they're they're thinking of doing this, that, and whatever. And then we got a call again, Saturday in the evening to mm. like come back and they took us in and they were basically like, yeah, these, these machines and all these tubes, this, that, whatever come in everywhere. And these medicines literally like they're keeping them alive. It's not healthy. Like we need to sort of cut it, like 
you know, stop st stop it all. So sort of like say your final goodbyes and things. Mm. And then, so that happened. We didn't stay because my, my brother had been there literally every day. He didn't really want to. No. didn't really want to stay if that makes sense like i know i know what if you'd say that first it seemed like really bad no but you've got to you i feel like you have to take into consideration the toll that has on you because yeah. when you see like i've had it before where i've seen my family like family members deteriorate and i think even down to the last day it's like that stuff can leave you scarred for a very very long time yeah. so yeah you have to I, I guess you always have to protect yourself in every situation and mm. I think what your brother done is completely acceptable yeah no uh, yeah I 100% agree he'd, he'd yeah. come home and it would be like you would have thought he would have done like three all nighters in a row do you know what I mean yeah. like he was absolutely shattered to the bone okay. um see so yeah, I stayed for a bit so, so my final bit and all that and then yeah that was that I was like I was like I was like to my mum and my dad's partner, I was like, as soon as soon as he passes away, like, like let me know. Mm. So it was about quarter past six in the morning. I hadn't really, I hadn't slept like, no. at all throughout the night. She came in and was like, yeah, he's he's passed now and things. And it was like, it's get this comes onto my point nicely of like all the massive like support and things that I've I've had. Obviously, it's not any different to anyone like like you said, like Jimmy or other people who I know who gone through the exact same thing like it's like I think yeah I was I sort of was in the day just sort of sitting there and I think it got to about half one and um the first the first one of the first things I did was uh do you remember Tom Kostick yeah yeah literally the first person I saw literally my dad died about what like eight hours before that yeah. first thing I did was go and see him mm. and it's like I was seeing people the next day like all the, all the people from Riddlestown and just literally just talking to them because obviously with like code and things and everyone going uni it's a bit more mm. like difficult but yeah I've had people like talk to me who I haven't heard from for about five ten years and things and people who are talking to me daily checking up how I am and that and honestly like if, if any of them are listening they know who they are but thank you again for, for everyone uh, who's been helping me and things um obviously it's not it's not an, it's not an easy an easy job it's a bit of a kick in the teeth really but um yeah, that was basically what happened. Um, yeah. yeah, it just took a massive, massive hit. Um, and they just like open like we didn't actually realise how like frequent it is. Like my brother, I forgot what I forgot what he said. It's like some statistics, like the amount of people like our age who have lost their parents like daily or something. It's like you wouldn't think honestly yeah. how much. Yeah, it's a lot. Mm. Um but yeah, no, that's Sort of went off on one really. <laughs> um, yeah. It's about. Yeah. yeah. Whatever, whatever is inside, Ollie, you have to let that out. Otherwise, it comes and it bites you, and it's not nice. It's and it's toxic to hold all that stuff in. Do you know what I mean? Um, yeah. You have to, you have to vent all this stuff out, and I think that's why, that's what you probably would have noticed from having them people around you, etc. How good it feels to actually get stuff off of your chest and talk about things because. Although it may be hard, once you've done it, you feel a lot of weight off your shoulders. Mm. Um, so yeah, literally any tangent, uh, we're here for it, mate. So yeah. as long as it's out, then we're happy. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. No, I think yeah. So I'd like it's a lot better to like rather than keep it in, like speak out. I know, I know, like there's like even myself, there's people who I don't want to tell like loads and loads to, and there's people who I want to tell everything to. Mm. But they even even for even things like this, you know what I mean? Like just sort of talking about it in general, not necessarily like the like the uh I don't know how to call it like the consoling process if that makes sense. Like rather yeah. than sort of trying to fix it, even just just talking about what happened in general, it helps yeah. massively. Coming to terms with it, I guess. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. I mean, I guess, I, I guess it's one of them things that you never really come to terms with it. But the more that you talk about it, the more comfortable you do feel like, and mm. you understand it more. And um, yeah, I think yeah, just it's got to be done. It has to yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. Um, so that would take me on to my next point. So. You, well, you, you have kind of, you have touched on it, um, so we'll only do a little bit on it, but 
um, the time where you were struggling, etc., mm. um, the environment that you surrounded yourself with, or you naturally got surrounded with, um, from what it sounds like, etc. Um, do you feel like that helped you at the time, or did it hold you back? Did it create bad habits, or it could be people you were hanging about with? Um, maybe some daily habits you picked up that may not have been as good or may have been good. Um, yeah, kind of give us a bit of insight into that. Yeah, I think because because of the situation it was, it's like the environment I was around, which would have been my, like, with most of the time would have been like my household. It was a bit more difficult because it was a lot of people feeling the same as I did. Yeah which I guess has its benefits because they'd be more open to talk about it and things. But then again, it's sort of like uh, not not like pointing fingers and saying that anyone's wrong, but everyone's going to be it's sort of a massive like down environment yeah. like majority of the time. And obviously like being, you did, I, like he, he left when I think I was around seven. I think he like moved out of the house. But even then it's like, you're like I'd be able to go into a room and be like three, three, four things instantly, which would just remind me of him. Do you know what I mean? Like, obviously it don't help but then like I'd find myself like even, even things like going on PlayStation do you know what I mean like just hearing your mates and having a good laugh and, and things it's like a, it's like an escape in a way sort of he's I'd say best of both worlds but it's sort of you're not going too far from reality yeah. then again you're not diving too deep in it you know what I mean yeah um yeah, no, with uh, obviously with like the restrictions of things, it's made it a bit difficult. But when I when I can, I've I've met up with people, yeah. and sort of like talked about it, done like even like, like FaceTime and things. You know what I mean? Um, so yeah, I wouldn't say, I'd say yeah, I'd say the environment weren't great at the time. Obviously, everyone's everyone's obviously not like kick, like kicking back fully, but everyone's sort of you know up on the mend and things and. Everyone's even even simple things like getting up out of bed. You know, you know what I mean. Like to some some people, it's like that's that's a challenge. You know what I mean? Um, yeah, no, it's um, yeah, no. I'd say the the the, the environment the environment's good. Like outside the house or like all, all the like like I said before, the people yeah. have been supporting me since like since it happened and things. And mm. yeah, no, it's been absolutely immense. Like, okay. we'll yeah. See. Um, so I, I just want to talk from a point where obviously I've known you for a very long time um, mm. we probably only started getting probably closer in our school years mm. when you joined Wallingham which must yeah. have been year 8 yeah I was 14 so maybe so, maybe year 9 yeah year 8 year 9 something around yeah, that so, yeah um, obviously um, that created us to be closer at school etc mm. um, and I think people watching this um, who I don't doubt people from Riddlesdown are going to be watching this etc I don't recognise the Ollie that I'm talking to right now but for, <laughs> but for such a good reason like I thought Ollie, I thought Ollie was great back then but now I think Ollie is like even better. Do you know what I mean? Like Ollie, like Ollie, Ollie in secondary school was a quiet boy unless you knew him. Mm. And if you did know him, you knew how funny he was like, and and always like made the whole group laugh, etc. And the craziest thing for me is I knew two Ollies at one time. I knew Wallingham Ollie who was so nervous when he came to football training and was kept very, very <laughs> quiet. But I also knew Ollie, I could go to school the next day and I knew Ollie who would be there and would be making everyone laugh, etc. So I feel like that shows you what your environment can do to you. And yeah. I just want to say to you, I think even from this call, you've inspired me to like carry on doing this stuff because the stuff that mm. I've gained from this and... Um, the fact that I know people are going to be able to listen to this and watch this, I think you're a massive inspiration. Like genuinely, I, I know we're not finished with a podcast, but genuinely, like, bro, it's only January. Yeah. All of this happened in October, right? And you're here, and you're talking about it, and you are like a massive role model for people who feel like they can't talk up. 
Like, yeah, because this just shows you that probably one of the worst things that can happen to you. I I truly believe le- losing a loved one, especially your parent, is probably one of the toughest things that can happen to you. Yeah. So for you to be able to do this right here, I think you've given me strength just from having this conversation because I think to be able to do that is honestly like crazy. Yeah, um, no, no, thank you, man. Honestly, thank no, you. Like genuinely, and I'm gonna stitch you up here, but I have to because okay. another thing that inspired me, and we, we, me and Ollie had a little conversation before we came on the on the on the podcast today, and. I want you to tell them um, about your next job occupation because I, I, I mean, I might be wrong, but I feel like if what happened in October didn't happen, would you still be going on to what you're doing next? No. <laughs> uh, all right. I thought so. So <laughs> um, Ollie, Ollie has done something excellent and, um, obviously, like he said, he, he is in accountancy right now. Um, but due to what is due to what happened, and due to uh, the 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 craziness of it, and how sad it is, um, you well, I'm gonna let him tell you. But he's decided to flip a ma- a massive negative into a positive in my eye. Um, so give us a little insight, Ollie. What's uh, what's the plans? Uh, well, it's a, it is a plan at the moment, whether it actually goes through, I, I, I really hope it does, honestly. Um, I've sort of like looked into it and things and it is like, it is something that's doable, do you know what I mean? But, um, yeah, I was sort of, I, I mean, I've told a few people, but basically what I was planning to go into, uh, counselling, um, just purely, like you said, if obviously if my dad passing away. Which I do want to say, I don't want it to sort of like belittle anyone else's situation. Do you know what I mean? Because I know that I know, I know I can name like quite a few people who have been through the exact same thing I've been through, and mm. even even younger. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Obviously, like honestly, I hold them in such high regard, whether they realise it or not. Um, but yeah, anyway, um, yeah, I went to go into counselling because, well, I mean, uh, you have to do like a certain amount just like normal counseling and xyz levels and things yeah um but yeah i specifically wanted to do bereavement counseling because um well i mean it sort of speaks for itself really um yeah. why i wanted to do it um yeah i just didn't like the the thought of people being able to talk to me about similar situations that i've been through and being able to help them even if it's like a tiny bit or whatever would like it would resonate with me so much and bring like great warmth to know that I could be someone that people could talk to yeah because like like I, before like even with the little bits that people were saying even the massive bits like it, it didn't mm. go it didn't go unnoticed at all and I just want to try and reciprocate that really and um, try and bring my experiences and knowledge and things within that situation and try and help others really because um yeah like i said that would just sort of rather than it sort of being me speaking out to others about my situation yeah. i prefer if other people spoke to me about theirs and me yeah. trying to help them that yeah. that sits with me a lot better than the other way if that makes sense 100 percent, and i think no no accountancy job, no accountancy wage, nothing in any other field would give you the satisfaction and the joy that you can bring to people through yeah. through the counselling and bereavement counselling, like in in particular, because where there's one that I always say to people, there's one thing talking to somebody who has a profession in something. And it's all well and good. And obviously they know their stuff, but I'd much rather talk to somebody who went through the same thing as me. Yep. Because you could be talking to that somebody who's a professional, but they've never been through anything like what you've been through. So mm-hmm. in some regard, they probably just wouldn't be able to hit that level of uh, of approach with you, I guess. Um, mm-hmm. Whereas if I'd lost my, if I'd lost my dad and such words, obviously it doesn't happen for a very long time, etc. But 
if I'd lost my dad and I was talking to somebody who'd also lost their dad, I feel like you'd be able to give me advice that somebody who'd never lost like their dad or a loved one could could give me. Yeah. Um, so yeah, um, well done for you. And obviously, if that's something that you want to make happen, Ollie, bro, stick with it, man. Because the all the all the exams, all the levels that you have to go through, etc. When you get to that, when you get to that job title, I promise you, it will one hundred percent be worth it, bro. And you're making that change that you want to see and you're being the person that you needed when you were struggling. And I think everyone needs to do that in their life. And um, sometimes a salary or a wage can't, can't ever pay what you pay for doing your purpose and your, your love. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, no, spot on, spot on. Yeah. Like I was, I was saying, who was I saying? I can't remember who I was saying it to. It's like, I'd rather, I'd rather earn less and be happy than earn more and not like be well, unhappy, I guess. Do you know what I mean? Like I'd, yeah. I'd, I'd rather, I'd rather have my own like my own mental health at a good state compared to any any, any amount of money really. Because I've like I feel like me, like mental health within the past couple of years, like the awareness of it has absolutely shot up. It's like it's even the little things like my my brother and a few of his mates hosted like a COVID-19 mental health quiz. Like it's even the little things like that. Like not, no one's ever heard of it, but like for that, for that charity that they were doing it for, they raised like, you know, like 1,200 and something. Like, honestly, it wouldn't. Yeah. Like, honestly, it's just, yeah. Yeah. Sick, 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 sick. Um, last question. If you could go back to when you were struggling the most, and give yourself advice, what would it be? Or someone, say you met someone tomorrow and they were going through something similar to you, what would you tell them? Talk, talk yeah. to people. Six. Do, yeah, I mean, like some, like not everyone's like, like they like, like doing physical activity. Some people prefer, like, might be on like the more artistic side or, mm. or whatever those things, but honestly, do do what you can with them and really like cherish them moments. Cause them times when you're feeling good, honestly, you'll look back like maybe in a couple of days time where you're feeling a bit, a bit worse for wear and things. And you'll look back and you'll, you'll really like, like, like I said, you, you truly cherish like them sort of moments and things. And a lot more people are there for you than like you, you think like I've heard. Yeah. Just, just from personal experience, like people just, always checking up on how I am some people prefer not to talk about it and things some people like to sort of keep it all which is completely fine don't get me wrong like if that's your if that's your way of operating then yeah. honestly um but yeah no nah, talk talk to people be vocal um yeah you know you're not alone there were like yeah you may sometimes you mean like I felt a bit alone Sometimes there's absolutely no reason why at all because I had pl plenty of people talking to me, but I still felt like alone. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like if anyone who's thinking that, it's honestly not the case at all. There's so many, there's so many people who, who are going to be there for you with these sort of situations, whether it be losing a loved one or whatever sort of, or sort of rough patches you have going through your life. Like honestly, people are here to support you. Like humans, just in general like here to support each other and things at the end of the day you know what i mean um yeah yeah honestly that's 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 probably what i'd say yes ollie from me uh i honestly i feel mad emotional but like i think that's just the effect that these conversations can have on people mm. um, and if i'm gonna be real i definitely hold you in high regard for being a role model for me like after hearing that I genuinely I look to you now and it sounds mad because you're the same age as me and stuff but in terms of how you deal with the, how you dealt with how you did and your outlook and how you can hold and how you hold yourself you're definitely somebody that I look up to like 110 percent um and I don't doubt there's going to be 150 million other people that like would like would love to see this and i hope 
this gets as much publicity as it can purely for the fact people need to hear how you have dealt with your story and how you hold yourself because even tonight hosting this chat I've learned everything and the real I tell the people because I've always said I'm going to come from a no filter approach I had the worst me and Ollie were meant to film this yesterday on Monday right and I bailed on Ollie because I had the worst day that I've had in the longest time and honestly you have made my week by having this conversation no, like, thank you. I feel so happy right now and obviously we all had a, that awful day yesterday and obviously I felt a bit sluggish today as it because sometimes it carries over you do you know what I mean yeah. like yeah. honestly I feel so happy to have had this conversation and to hear what you've had to say so on behalf of me and on behalf of everyone listening to this I just want to say thank you so much for coming on uh, no, no, thank like, you both. honestly to, to, to be as brave as what you have been and to give us that insight that you've had, I feel touched and I feel I feel very inspired by you as a person and your story. Um, so thank you for giving up your time to come and talk to us. Um, and I hope one day I see you as the, the biggest bereavement counsellor on this planet. <laughs> you're, you're changing people's lives every single day because honestly... You deserve it, bro. That's the plan. No, thank, thank you, man. Honestly, I, I, I feel like I feel like even even with you having your your down there yesterday, obviously you didn't you didn't say that to me, but mm. I, I feel like what was it like? I saw. Did you see um, that thing with uh, Jordan Ibe? Yeah, yeah. You come out. It's like it, it sort of made me put in perspective. I know this is completely off tangent. That's right. Um, but um, yeah, no, it's like people would look at him and think. You know, he, yeah, he's he's doing professional football. He's doing what he loves. He's he's earning like this 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 amount, whatever you know. However, people perceive happiness in their lives. But I feel like you can still feel like that. Like 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 I, I, I see you doing well. Like I was, I was saying to you before this start, like the, what the things I'm seeing you doing. It's like it's like sick. You know what I mean? You can see that you're enjoying yourself. Yeah. But it's fine to have them days. You know what I mean? Like yeah. it's they're, they're due they're due to come. Obviously, you can't like escape them sort of feelings. Yeah. Like, all the time but yeah no it's definitely due to happen and yeah. it's like yeah no it's fine honestly <laughs> you know what I mean like if you bail to bail me today that's fine let's <laughs> do tomorrow isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> uh, no honestly Oli um thank you so much and I'd love to have you on another time say a year from now and we see how you're getting on and what you've learned etc six months two months a year um I definitely want to have you back on and uh, inspire the people again. Yeah, no. From, from all of us, make sure you subscribe, um, like the video, share it around. This needs the publicity because that that's the story that needs to be heard. Um, so thank you all for listening. And Oli, hopefully I'll see you soon. We'll sort something yeah. out after Corona, mate. Yeah, 100%. 100%. You, you take care of yourself, bro. And you, man. And you. Cheers. Take care. Take care. Yeah, I knew.